blessing it was to have your pasture at Oak Grove back in July. What a blessing that was. And thankful that we were able to have that time together. Uh, boy, I tell you what, the Lord blessed richly him to preach a power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit. And I think the Lord blessed him with the gift. I think many people should hear and thankful for that. Brother Dan Hall was there and enjoyed that and and do invite each and every one that's able to be out there in February for the weekend. Um, do ask an interest in your prayers for this meeting. I know this brother needs a prayer. I'll try not to take too much time. If you have your Bibles with you and you'd like to turn with me, please turn with me over to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. I know we're not unfamiliar with this scripture, uh, but I want it's been on my mind quite a bit uh, lately, and I want us to look uh, over here at uh, verse 28 through uh, 29 and 30 for a minute. And it says, And we know that all things work together uh, for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren moreover whom he did predestinate them he also called and whom he called them he also justified and whom he justified them he also glorified <coughs> what shall we then say to these things if God be for us <coughs> who can be against us think about that who can be against us I want us to focus in on just the subject just shortly here of predestination the subject of predestination to understand predestination you first have to understand that uh, you've heard it a lot of times been said election predestination when election and predestination those Stephen I've talked about this a bit lately election and predestination are two completely different things Amen. Uh, the problem we have today is so many people love to lump it into one uh, place, uh, one word. It's not one word. Uh, election is foreknowledge of God, the love of God, uh, before the foundation of the world. That's an elect. He has an elect people. You say, how cruel. No. How could God have one person, one person that he takes and puts in glory uh, when sin and death by sin passed upon all men uh, because of the first man, Adam. To understand election and predestination, you have to first understand total depravity at the law of sin. Amen. And then, you have to understand that. Uh, you have to fully understand the total depravity. Total depravity is not the doctrines of salvation by grace it's a doctrine there uh, that you need to know before you study the doctrines of grace. Grace is the gift of God, God's gift. What's laid out here is beautifully a systematic, uh, a theological way and outline of the work that God has laid out in the doctrines of grace. And it's beautiful. Amen. It doesn't have to be complicated by a bunch of books. It doesn't have to be complicated by other man's theologies. And it doesn't have to be complicated by something called Tula uh, to help you to understand it. That's what it is for. That's all it is. But to clearly lay it out the way Scripture has laid it out, it's laid out there for a reason the way it's laid out. Now I want you to notice. For whom he did foreknow, that's election. That's the foreknowledge of God. That's the love of God. He says he also did predestinate to be conformed. Notice that word conform to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among what many brethren Amen. why does it say conform have you thought about that yes. this doesn't mean that uh, God Almighty is this horrible dictator person uh, uh, that is uh, like some kind of narcissistic uh, leader out here and a socialist a uh, crazy person uh, that's trying to kill all certain people uh, and have his own uh, type of people. That's not what this is talking about. You've got to first understand, remember, 
total depravity to understand the doctrines of grace. Exactly. You have to understand what was God's people uh, designed for. You remember the Bible teaches that the potter hath power over the clay. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, God made some unto honor and some unto dishonor. If he foreknew you before the foundation of the world, that was before Adam and Eve was in the Garden of Eden, uh, that was because he foreknew you intimately, all of his elect people, that be as the what? The sand of the seas, the children of Israel as the sand of the seas. That's a great number of people. <coughs> now, if that's a great number of people, if you hold the sand in your hand, that's a greater number than any man could ever count. Uh, each granule, that's a greater number than any man could count uh, uh, that could try and save in their life in these other denominations. That's a greater number than Billy Graham has ever reached in his ministry. So that's God. You think about that. That's the elect people of God being as the sand of the seas. That's a numerous people. That's greater than any man could save. But because he had a great love for them and he had a foreknowledge of them and he elected them because he knew he had perfect knowledge of what Adam was about to do in that garden. Adam had a choice. And he chose to partake of that fruit. It wasn't Eve because sin passed upon all men. It was Adam. Amen. That's right. And because of Adam's choice, my dear friends, that was a consequence. Death came by sin. And sin and death passed upon all that was produced by man including you and me. Every mankind in this world, that's all. So there had to be something that had to happen. So I want you to think about this. That conform doesn't mean to uh, shove a, a round peg into a square hole or a square peg into a round hole. That's not what that means. God had designed you, he had elected you for a, per a specific purpose. What? To be his child. He loved you. But when sin entered in, and when Adam chose to sin, and death came by sin, something had to happen. Something had to change, didn't it? So therefore, predestination, it had to happen there. <clears throat> he had to predestinate you. He had to predestinate you to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. I want us to think about that. If he has predestinated you to be conformed, that means by the work of the Holy Ghost that he has elected you. He has, uh, you have been born again by the child, by the grace of God, by the Spirit of God that has quickened you. Not only that, uh, because of uh, the election of God that he knew you. Not only that, because of Jesus Christ's obedience. Uh, you remember over at 1 Peter it says, Elect according to God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ yes. our Lord. Brothers and sisters, see how grace works. <laughs> That's a work that God's doing there that you are predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son. Right. And not only that, one of the last things there is in the resurrection when this old body is resurrected and he's going to be brought up and he's going to be made just right uh, to match that which is spiritual inside of you, brothers and sisters. Let me tell you yeah. something. Yeah. This body is going to be just right. Uh, that's predestination, you see. Uh, that's God. Uh, he has a purpose there. Uh, he has a purpose uh, for you uh, as his people. Uh, and it doesn't give us the license to sin it because there's consequences for sin. We see that in total depravity and all sin. But we have to suffer those consequences here in this life. But because of God's great knowledge and his love for his children, he predestinated you to be conformed to the yeah. image of his son. Right. That's great love of God, isn't it? That's a great, great love of God to predestinate you so that you are going to be just right. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be tainted anymore. 
Amen. You're going to be just right. And God's will Amen. is going to be done just Amen. as he wants it. Amen. Thanks for your time, your kind, sweet attention. Continue to keep these brethren in your prayers. Amen. Amen.